Hello everyone, this is Albert. And this video is, and the one to follow, it'll be a two, little two-part thing I'm doing here, is a response to a YouTube user who goes by the moniker Dorbaton. He apparently feels a calling to disprove the existence of God and any other manifestation of the supernatural. Um, in the particular video to which I am responding, the metalogical argument for the non-existence of all things supernatural is just one of many such efforts. Uh, not that any of his efforts have been serious challenges, mind you, but he is nothing if not persistent. Until now, I've never really bothered to become involved in the various discussions on YouTube concerning arguments for or against the existence of God, and certainly have not responded uh, to any of Dorpaton's efforts. Uh, First of all, other people, including other atheists, have shot holes through Dorpaton's many alleged proofs, and he seems only to become more obstinate in his views of, by the criticism. Um, thus, my own criticism would not only be superfluous, but uh, not serve any real useful purpose. Secondly, I have no real desire to become involved in the constant haggling over the various metaphysical points that seem more about demonstrations of cleverness than truth. Um, I've never seen anyone change their views because of such arguments one way or the other, and I doubt I ever will. Um, while some arguments might be soundly reasoned, one can always deny the presuppositions, and it will simply lack any compelling force. Uh, with all respects to those who do wish to engage in these arguments, I do not think the world really needs one more YouTuber pontificating on the intricacies of Kalam. So why respond to this one? Um, frankly, the uh, best way to say is for the heck of it, I don't know. Uh, I checked, in, at some point I got a link to something on Dorpaton's page um, looking at someone else's videos and I noticed a particular video with the word metalogical that caught my eye. Um, since I majored in mathematics and a particular interest in mathematical logic, I simply couldn't resist. Um, that, this is not um, that this that this particular demonstration by Dorpaton is more of a challenge than his others, but I think it does illustrate very well his failures in using basic reasoning, and since he's bringing metalogic into it, it allows me to demonstrate metalogically where he fails miserably. Um, in this video, I'm just basically going to outline uh, some points, and the next one I'll actually go through the, the, his proof. Um, so how does one begin responding to the metalogical argument for the non-existence of all things supernatural? Well, I guess the best place to start is to note that Dorpaton really doesn't seem to know what metalogical actually means. Uh, metalogic is the study of formal logical systems to determine their scope and limitations. Uh, metalogical analysis will examine questions such as interpretations, consistency, completeness, compactness, and computability of some system in question. Um, you will find under its banner topics such as formal semantics and proof theory. It is in fact the study of logical systems as systems and what we can know about these systems rather than the results deduced from within the systems. Uh, for example, if P and Q say are propositional sentences, then if P and Q, then Q would be a theorem of a logical system uh, because if P and Q are both true, then of course Q will be true on its own. Um, that would be a theorem of a, of a logical system. The, on the other hand, the completeness of first order logic is a meta theorem. Uh, the sentence 2 plus 2 equals 4 is a theorem of first order logic with arithmetic, but the incompleteness of that particular system is a meta theorem. So theorems are about the objects in the system, meta theorems are about the system itself. Um, Dorpaton really doesn't deal with any of this in his metalogical proof since he doesn't ever give us a real formal system to examine. However, I've decided to at least move the discussion in the right direction and perhaps give him a clue as to where this, like all his other proofs, fail. I will say this, until now all of his proofs have been obvious repetitions of the same error. Although this, although this one will eventually reduce to the same error, it does at least bring in enough twists to see he's trying to expand his repertoire. What I'll do is give an analysis of Dorbaton's metalogical proof, but first we need to understand what comprises a formal system. Uh, for those interested in this topic, I 
actually recommend the classic introductory textbook, uh, which is Jeffrey Hunter's Logic and Metal Logic. Um, I'll include a preview link in Google Books in the sidebar. Uh, you can look at it. Unfortunately, the Google preview doesn't include the most important sections, but one can at least get a taste for the type of rigor involved in where Dorbatan is simply out of his league in this regard. Um, although it is not necessarily relevant to what follows, I'll just assume the use of first order logic with equality. Uh, it doesn't really matter that, that I would do that, but that basically first order logic with equality includes all your normal logical rules. A formal system or theory will have the language of first order logic augmented by whatever symbols are needed for the theory and its rules of inference. And an axiom basically would be a rule of inference without, pre without premises. Um, then there will also be what is known as a universe of discourse. Sometimes it also can be referred to as a domain of discourse. They're used interchangeably. Uh, and that is essentially the class of objects in, of the theory, the class of things that will be considered objects in that particular theory. Then there is an interpretation, which is a mapping of, for example, constants and variables of the language to the uh, to the objects in the universe of discourse and functional and relational symbols in the language to functions and relations over objects in the universe of discourse. Quantifiers are, of course, limited in their scope to the universe of discourse. <clears throat> now, this last item is important since it underlines the most persistent mistake in all of Dorpaton's proof attempts. Since you can only quantify over objects of the universe of discourse, you can only make statements about the objects in the universe of discourse. Uh, you cannot make existential statements concerning existence, but only existence within the universe of discourse. Furthermore, you can only assert statements that are implied by the rules of inference of your theory. There may be other statements that are true, but not covered by your theory. Um, not only that, but your theory may exist within a larger structure of which it is a substructure. That is, the theory may be homomorphically embeddable within another theory of which it may be considered a, a closed subsystem. Uh, for example, the natural numbers are embedded in, embeddable into the integers that are embeddable into the rational numbers that are embeddable into the real numbers that are embeddable into the complex numbers. Uh, the fact that laws apply over the entire domain of one theory does not mean the entire system cannot be embedded within a larger system where those laws do not apply over the expanded domain. In this case, the system to which Dorpatan alludes, that which formalizes the walls of nature in our space-time realm, might possibly be embedded within a larger realm, and the walls of nature that Dorpatan would recognize only apply over this particular subsystem. Uh, this does not even have to be anything connected with one, with one, what one would consider uh, the supernatural. Um, Dorpatan essentially has defined everything outside our space-time realm to be supernatural since our laws of nature would only apply there. Thus, according to his reasoning, the embedding of our space-time realm as a membrane within a larger structure as, as in M-theory would make all other membranes supernatural by definition. Um, this assertion, combined with his sloppy reasoning and lack of logical rigor, leads to numerous errors wherein he merely assumes what he wishes to prove. Sometimes he uses terms incorrectly and at other times he switches definitions of terms in mid-proof. Generally all of his alleged proofs reduce to assuming there is nothing outside the space-time realm, noting that God is outside the space-time realm and then declaring God does not exist. Of course he would never be quite that clear and so he uses all manner of convoluted reasoning and definition switching to reach his conclusions. Uh, at this point, I'm going to stop here, and so th this has just all been the introduction so um, to prepare so people in terms of what metalogic actually is, and then s next we're going to next video, which I will put a link to in the under this one, and you will be able to go to that and see m my analysis and basically deconstruction of Dorpaton's uh, proof, and that will come next time. Thank you very much for your time.